This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. So let's begin by enabling PhotoView 360. There's a couple ways you can do this. Here in the standard toolbar, you can access add-ins by clicking the downward pointing arrow next to the options button and select add-ins. After clicking on this, you'll see all the add-ins that are available with your installation. To start PhotoView 360 in this window, Select on active add-ins and click OK. The first box up here will only load it this one time and the next time you start SOLIDWORKS it will not load it again. If you want it to automatically load up every time you start SOLIDWORKS, you can select Startup and this will start to program each time SOLIDWORKS is loaded. The second way is a lot easier. In the Command Manager, click on the Office Products tab and just click on PhotoView 360. Once PhotoView 360 is loaded, a new tab will be added to the command manager called Render Tools. There's also a menu pull-down containing the same options that are listed in the tab of the command manager. In the command manager tab, the first three buttons allow you to change the appearance, edit the scene, or edit the decal. This is the same as using the Appearances tab of the task pane. If you use PhotoView 360 in one of the earlier versions of SOLIDWORKS, you had a different interface for adding appearances or scenes to the model. Now it's the same whether or not you have PhotoView 360 loaded. Once you have set up your appearances and scenes, you can get a preview of how the overall scene will look when it's rendered one or two ways. You have the integrated preview which shows the preview within the graphics area. Depending on the speed of your computer, it could take a little time to load up. Normally, I don't like to use the integrated preview screen just because it is so much information in this graphics area and it kind of gets in the way sometimes. So instead, I like to use the preview window. The preview window opens up a separate window that you could resize or move off to the side if you have a second monitor. The preview window will show a basic idea of how the screen will look. You'll see the scene as it will be applied after it's rendered, the lighting effects, and how the materials will more or less look. Before you go and do the final rendering, especially at higher resolutions, you want to make sure that the scene shown in the preview is close to what you want to do because otherwise you're going to waste a lot of time creating a bunch of renderings just to get the right look and feel. The next button in the tab is for the final render. Once you've already applied all your appearances and your scenes and tweaked your camera views, this will load the preview window and then load the PhotoView 360 final render window where the final rendering will take place. But before you click on the final render, make sure you have all your settings in place. And to do this, next to that is the options. In the options, you specify the size that the rendered image will be when it's created. Of course, larger resolutions will take longer to render. So initially, I always start with the smaller render just to get a quick idea. You could fine tune it if you want something not quite what's available in the presets. You can adjust the aspects ratios or keep a fixed aspect ratio. So as you change one value, the other value will change along with it. And you'll see the aspect ratio update here. This option allows you to use the background aspect ratio. The background aspect ratio is if you have an image on the background, so it actually takes the ratio of that image rather than squishing or distorting the background image. The next option, you specify the image format that you want to create by default. You can change this when you actually go to save the image that's rendered. But initially, it's probably better to select which image you're going to be saving it as. The location where the image will be saved after it's rendered is shown here, and you could change it by clicking on the browse. The next section in the property manager is to change the render quality. The preview render is the quality of the rendering as is shown in the preview window. 
or when you have the integrator preview. I normally keep this at a lower preview level, so it's not going to take too long to load up. The final rendering quality is the quality of the render that is created when it's actually done. You have four options for this, and I myself tend to use best a lot more. Maximum, you can really get some great images from this, but it takes a lot longer to render, especially at higher aspect ratios. The next section is where you can enable or disable bloom within the final rendering. The bloom effect is a glow around a very bright or emissive reflective objects in an image. The bloom is visible in the final rendering, so you will not see it in the preview window, but you will see it in the final rendering based on the settings. It depends on what material you're using, how the lights are set up. So sometimes you might not even tell that you have a bloom enabled in the image. Contour rendering creates a contour lines on the outside of the model. As the preview shows here, it creates the rendering and the outside edges are thicker or a different color based on the settings here. The last option is to adjust the direct caustics for the rendering. This controls the number of photons that are shot at each pixel within your image. It's a little more of an advanced rendering. So if you don't need it, or if you don't know how to use it, it's not a big deal to leave it out. If you need to know, or you forget any of these areas, a really helpful thing is to turn on the dynamic help here at the very top of the property manager. When you turn on dynamic help, when you hover over certain areas, for instance, the caustic value, the pop-up will show a description of what that field does. Once you have set all your options that you want to do, click OK. Then you can create your final rendering. So to create the rendering, just click on this button. The preview window will load up first. Then momentarily, the final rendering window will open. Depending on the size that you set, and the quality, this rendering process can take anywhere from a couple seconds to a couple minutes. So as it's rendering, you'll see these squares jumping around the screen. These are called buckets, and these are based on a number of cores available on your system. So I have an eight core processor, so it flies through. If you have a dual core or a quad core, you'll see two to four to eight. So this whole image took 51 seconds to render. And this is the final rendering that came out of it. You can make adjustments. You can close this window, go back and make adjustments to the image. If it's exactly what you want and you're good with it, you can save the image by clicking save image and you'll be able to save it. You could also save a layered image as a PNG file, which will save the layer of the actual model as one layer and then the background will be a different layer so you can bring this into like Photoshop and have a alpha channel so this could be used in different applications. And then last but not least in this window here is these buttons that are available here. These buttons allow you to view previous renderings that you've done. So if you for some reason forget to save an image that you created you can go back through some of your previous ones and then save it at that time. You have 10 slots here. So once you filled up 10 slots, then it will start over again at zero.